Thank you for joining us for today's webinar, Material Ingredient Reporting. We have some brief housekeeping before we start. Your phones are on mute. If you have any questions, please type them into the Q&A box in the corner of your screen, and we'll answer them at the end of today's session, time permitting, or via an email after. And you can always send questions to MaPay Digital at mapay.com. And we'll also invite you to visit our health and environment pages on our website at mapay.com, where we have multiple pages full of the latest industry information, including helpful links and downloads. And these pages also happen to be overseen by today's speaker, MaPay Corporation's Sustainability Manager, Brittany Storm. Brittany has a background as a sustainable building consultant and she has a background in construction and this unique combination allows her to speak to audiences about both the big picture as well as the technical aspects of a project. She's a lead accredited professional, AP, with BD plus C and ID plus C specialties as well as being a Well AP and a FitWell ambassador. In addition, she's active on many sustainability committees, and I'm really happy to welcome her back to the microphone. Brittany, the floor is yours. Thank you. Good afternoon, everyone, and good morning to some of you. Uh, thanks for joining me for this presentation on material ingredient reporting. Over the last few years, we've seen a growing demand for sustainability in our products to have a dual focus on reducing our impacts on the environment as well as on human health and well being. There are product certifications or attributes for environmental impacts, others for human health impacts, and some product certifications that cover both. Today's topic, material ingredient reporting, will focus on human health impacts. Uh, before we get started, I will preface this presentation by stating that I do not work in MAPE labs. I'm not an R&D and I am not a chemist. Uh, most of the conversations around hazards and chemicals and raw materials are way over my head. Um, however, I know just enough to apply them to green building programs and I will share that knowledge with you today. Today's learning objectives include uh, material ingredient transparency and why it's important, types of material ingredient reports that are available, <clears throat> how to use material ingredient reports to meet various green building standards and certification programs, our material ingredient reports that are known as manufacturer inventories, and the third-party verification process that we go through. Uh, as well as living building challenges, uh, red list, and why project teams should avoid using these. <clears throat> First, it's important to note that there are two types of product declarations that products can have. Environmental product declarations, or EPDs, disclose environmental information, including life cycle assessment uh, from material extraction through disposal. Uh, there's health product declarations or material ingredient reports that disclose information related to a product's ingredients and their potential health hazards. <clears throat> These two declarations do not compete with each other. Uh, however, depending on the green building program that your project is pursuing, uh, one declaration may be more important than another. So for example, uh, a project pursuing living building challenge or the well building standard, uh, you should select products that have a health product declaration or another form of material ingredient reporting uh, over a product that has an environmental product declaration. Um, alternatively, uh, projects pursuing BREAM or Green Globes uh, would pursue uh, pro products that have environmental product declarations over a material ingredient report. For LEED, uh, they prefer if you have both. Uh, so it, it's really up to the, the uh, green, green building program that you're pursuing as far as what's, what's more important. Um, it, it does not imply that a product is environmentally superior or healthier than another uh, by having one or the other. It's just knowing what it takes to contribute to green building points, I would suggest choosing one over the other. 
uh, in addition to criteria that reduces impacts on the environment, products used in the environment, uh, the built environment should meet specific criteria for health and safety of all occupants. When talking to sustainability minded people, they use the word transparency a lot, and that means that they want to know what's in a product or how that product <clears throat> will impact the environment and or building occupants. In the past, products have made their way into the built environment only to find out later that they have harmful effects on uh, human health. So think like lead or asbestos. Uh, since the 1950s, there's a tremendous amount of synthetic chemicals that have been developed that significantly impact health and wellness, uh, as well as the environment, and are used in all parts of our lives, from agriculture to food to beauty products and building materials. When these chemicals enter the food system or our indoor environments, the interactions with human health can be significantly impacted. There are three main ways that go back here. Uh, there's three main ways that we can interact with chemicals, the skin contact, uh, inhalation, or ingestion. Uh, in the built environment, we, we most often interact with these chemicals through uh, inhalation or skin contact. Studies show that uh, exposure to chemicals in our daily lives have significant impact on our health uh, by disrupting many of our internal systems. Uh, so for these reasons and countless others, uh, imp it's imperative for us to advocate for full transparency and to uh, partner with manufacturers to find sustainable, healthier solutions for our built environment. Uh, transparency ramped up with the formation of the Living Building Challenge, the Well Building Standard, and previous versions or previous green building certification systems like LEED, uh, their newer versions are starting to implement health-related credits. As a social concern for sustainability, um, health and wellness continues to grow. Uh, building occupants have shown increasing interest in uh, vis visibility of their products and processes for manufacturing. We spend the majority of our time indoors. The built environment is growing rapidly and is present in all parts of our life. Uh, we demand to know what's in our food, so why not demand to know what's in our products? Material ingredient reports are standardized ways of reporting content of building products. They're valuable tools for not only encouraging transparency, but also creating a sense of brand trust. So the biggest barrier to health implications of building materials has been not knowing what ingredients exist in products that we specify. Uh, gaining access to product ingredients has historically been difficult. Traditionally, uh, the industries relied on information reported in a product safety data sheet or SDS. The intent of the SDS is to report potential hazards based on occupational exposures during production, handling, and installation. But the SDS has limited value because manufacturers are not required to disclose all ingredients. It's all too common to find SDSs with less than 100% of their ingredients disclosed. Uh, in many cases, some don't include it at all. Uh, so in general, the SDS should not be used as a proxy for a product's full list of ingredients, just a, a place to start looking. There is, however, a standardized way or path for a manufacturer to disclose ingredients and improve the health pro profile of their products. Uh, again, this goes beyond creating an SDS. So this entails making sure that substances and materials within their products do not pose any health impacts. The first step to fully understanding the known and potential or environmental impacts of specific substances is to screen them. And there are two types of screening, hazard screening and restricted substance list screening. And we'll talk about both of those today. Hazard screening is more rigorous and is required piece of third-party assessment programs. Hazard screening refers to cross-checking product ingredients against a wide array of authoritative uh, hazard lists to identify any known hazards, uh, such as those referenced by green screen and reported or disclosed in a material ingredient report. Green screen for safer chemicals is a globally recognized tool that identifies hazardous chemicals and safer alternatives. So uh, Green Screen has uh, two lists. Uh, the one on the left is the Green Screen List Translator, 
it's a, a quick first step to identifying chemicals of concern. Um, Green Screen does this by scoring chemicals based on information from over 40 hazard lists. So a LT1 or a list translator score of one means that the hazard classification for a given chemical is known as being a chemical of high concern and you should avoid it. An LTP1 is mean, uh, means that the uh, chemical possibly has uh, a hazard of, of high concern. Uh, LT unc or unknown means that it's unknown if the chemical is of high concern or not. Uh, it doesn't mean that the chemical is a low hazard, it just means that the chemical has not been uh, revised or or reviewed um, or tested uh, as as being one or the other. So they would have to do more research to uh, determine its hazard profile and whether or not it would be a concern. The this the one the column on the left uh, the list translator assessment is a useful first screening step. However, it's abbreviated version of Green Screen's capabilities. Uh, there's a more comprehensive assessment. Uh, which is the next step or the um, column on the right or the image on the right um, and it, it, they go beyond the LT uh, scores that you see there on the left there. So uh, for a green screen benchmark assessment which is the column on the right, uh, assessors would evaluate based on hazard data available and there's other parameters and then they assign a, a chemical, a benchmark score. So each chemical is assigned this score, a benchmark of, or BM, uh, a score between one and four. Each has an increasing um, safer as, as, the, as the number increases. So you see all the way till you get to green would be a, a preferred chemical to use. This information is way over my head and probably getting too far into the weeds, but I promise I have a point in sharing this information. So after screening is complete, manufacturers can publicly disclose their material ingredients, uh, including the potential hazards that we just talk, talked about. Uh, the disclosure step here, the, the third one down, uh, coincides with LEADS Material Ingredients Credit Option 1, Material Ingredient Reporting Disclosure. This is language pulled from LEAD version 4.1's reference guide. Uh, it's the latest and greatest reference uh, guide or version within LEAD. Uh, this lead, LEAD language states um, the following ways to disclose material ingredients. So I've highlighted material ingredient report options specific to our industry. Uh, there are other material ingredient reports for furniture and furnishings that are not highlighted. Most are familiar with HPDs. Uh, in fact, most customers ask for HPDs. However, I'm here to tell you there are more material ingredient reports out there that are beyond HPDs. <clears throat> to achieve one point on a lead project, one point, uh, lead requires project teams to use at least 20 different permanently installed products from at least five different manufacturers that use any of these programs. And I know it's a lot of text and we'll break that down as we go further. This is a cleaner version of what you just saw. Um, you can see here we talk about cradle to cradle, uh, declare global green tag PhD, health product declarations, uh, living product challenge, manufacturer inventories, and then we has all of the language on how to meet those individual uh, criteria of those disclosures. But this is a cleaner version for you to see. Um, <clears throat> material ingredient reports, again, are a form of disclosure. They don't necessarily mean a product is healthy. Rather, it infers a, that a, a material ingredient has passed a specific set of reporting standards. Uh, ingredients were identified, they were screened for potential health impacts, and the information was disclosed for the public. Currently, regulations do not require manufacturers or suppliers to disclose product information beyond an SDS. However, manufacturers may offer disclosures if should they choose to pursue these. There are several reports or declarations that provide chemical ingredient disclosure information, including uh, manufacturer inventory, health product declaration, cradle to cradle, declare label, UL product lens, and more. For many manufacturers, reporting on material health is new territory, and obtaining the data needed can be very challenging. 
Each of these material ingredient disclosures and certifications offers different approaches to material ingredient reporting. Most focus on human health and well-being. Uh, some are single attributes, like Green Circle Certified Manufacturer Inventory only shares material ingredients, while other disclosures or certifications uh, may have multiple attributes, like Green Tag uh, PhD. Uh, that de declaration considers environmental and human health attributes, and we'll, we'll talk about that as we get further along. All of these are green product certifications. You need green product certifications to achieve green building certifications. So if a product has one of these certifications, it doesn't automatically mean that the project team achieves LEED certification as a, as a for instance. There, there's a lot more that goes into it than just uh, selecting products that have um, a material ingredient disclosure, and we'll share that. This is Cradle to Cradle, uh, probably the most ambitious or actionable certification program. Uh, certification framework is structured around five quality categories, making it multi-attribute report. Uh, product is assigned an achievement level, like basic, bronze, silver, gold, or platinum. Uh, the product's lowest category achievement also re represents its overall certification level. Each level of achievement requires the manufacturer to meet an additional criteria. Uh, the standard encourage, encourages continuous improvement over time by awarding certification on the basis of ascending levels of achievement. Uh, that Cradle to Cradle also has a material health certificate uh, that recognizes the performance of a product in a material health category, which is just one of the five categories that you see here. And Cradle to Cradle is recognized by Lead Well, Living Building Challenge, Bream, and uh, many more green building programs that are out there. Declare label, I, I think it looks like a nutrition label for products. Uh, this is also a multi-attribute product certification. Uh, declare labels ask three questions. Where's the product coming from? What's it made of? Um, like manufacturers can declare a product's ingredients and its its compliance with red list within this section and they also ask where does it go at the end of its life and those questions are answered in the form of this declare label the label includes information about uh, final assembly locations embodied carbon information uh, end of life options so like uh, a take back program or whether or not it's recyclable or reusable or etc material ingredients, what, what the product is made of, and it also shares compliance with red list and uh, healthy interior performance imperatives within the Living Building Challenge. Manufacturer inventory or an MI. MIs are a single attribute material ingredient report. This means that the report only details a product's material ingredients and hazards. Uh, we do have other certifications or attributes such as EPDs or VOC emission certifications and they have different criteria to meet so they go on a different report or a different certification type. Uh, this is a, an MI is a, a transparency document that shows the ingredients in a product and their associated hazards. It may not seem like a lot of work to create an MI. Um, behind the scenes, it, it's, it's quite the process. Uh, it requires participation from many different departments within MAPEI, uh, including tech services, sustainability, R&D, purchasing, uh, as well as we have to reach out to our suppliers to ask for uh, ingredients and or the raw materials that they're supplying. So if some products have anywhere from five to 20 suppliers that we would have to get information from. So if we zoom in here, uh, you can see the ingredient name, cast number, uh, the role of the ingredient, uh, hazard categories, et cetera. Uh, remember that the green screen scores that we talked about earlier, uh, you can see those on the far right under the hazard category. Uh, each ingredient is screened and assigned the green screen score that we talked about earlier. Well, it looks like we're sharing all of our secrets. Uh, manufacturers have the ability to mark things as trade secret. It's not to hide things from customers. Uh, it's not to, it's not that we're hiding bad stuff. Um, Mape does like to keep things close to the heart. Uh, but we also understand that, you know, this is what's being asked of us 
as, as a manufacturer from our customers and from green building programs. Um, so I'm sure every, every manufacturer can relate to this. Um, uh, to counter that, uh, not everything can be trade secret. We do have a limit on what we can, what we can share or not share. Uh, so we do work with a third party verifier to determine what can be marked as trade secret uh, to protect MAPE and what can be revealed to share our commitment to sustainability. It's truly a juggle of what can and cannot be shared. And while third party verification is optional, um, MAPE's MIs are third party assessed and verified by Green Circle Certified. This holds pay accountable uh, and avoids greenwashing. It's also a bonus for customers because uh, third-party verified material ingredient reports are worth 1.5 products under LEED version 4.1, and we'll we'll talk about this more later. So while uh, MIs are probably a lesser known uh, material ingredient report, uh, MIs are a compliant pathway for projects pursuing LEED, Living Building Challenge, the Well Building Standard, and many more uh, green building programs that are out there. Living Product Challenge. This is similar to uh, Declare Labels that we talked about earlier. It's a multi-attribute certification. Uh, the LPC, or Living Product Challenge, it ensures products are healthy and free of toxins, uh, socially responsible, and that they respect the rights of workers or installers or manufacturers, uh, net positive and uh, benefit both people and the environment. So there's seven performance areas or pedals um, that you have to pursue in order to achieve this certification. So each performance area has a number of more detailed requirements or imperatives that um, manufacturers would have to achieve. It's developed by the International Living Future Institute for Living Building Challenge projects. However, Living Product Challenge um, certifications or, the, or this uh, label uh, can also be used on lead and well building uh, programs as well as others out there. Green tag, uh, green tag PhD, uh, product health declaration. Uh, as I mentioned earlier, this declaration considers environmental and human health considerations. Uh, this declaration assesses the health impacts of the final product, not just the hazards of each ingredient. A product health declaration is available to manufacturers whose products are certified under version four of Green Tag. Um, LEED in their in their language states that uh, in order to consider a PhD label on one of their projects, uh, the label would have had to have been issued after January of 2020 in order to be used on on a LEED project. The Green Tag health rate marks range from uh, bronze, which indicates that the product has achieved a good health rate, uh, to silver, which is very good, gold, excellent, and platinum, which is world leading. Green tags can be used on lead and uh, well building projects. UL Product Lens, collaboration uh, between UL Environment and Cradle to Cradle um, to create this uh, certification or, or material ingredient report. Uh, UL's chemical assessment program is based on material health assessment methodology that Cradle to Cradle created. They do differ from Cradle to Cradle. Um, products can contain any ingredients, including materials that are banned on Cradle to Cradle program. Um, disclosure rates differ. There are exposure assessments that aren't identical to those in Cradle to Cradle. So uh, some scenarios may or may, may or may not be taken into account in one assessment where they would be required in another. Um, I do not believe UL product lens can be used on living building challenge projects. However, they are compliant with LEED and WELL. So this is where manufacturers also have to take into consideration the amount of green building programs that their reports would comply with. Um, you know, if you, you're seeing like some do comply with living buildings, some do not, some comply with LEED, some do not. It's, it's rather than having all of them, um, it, it's really the manufacturer needs to decide how many different green building standards they want to 
pursue or, or are able to pursue based on the material ingredient report that they have. Health product, health product declarations or HPDs. This is probably the one everyone's most familiar with. Um, I would say most commonly requested form of material ingredient reports that we get. Um, HPDs do not have to be third party assessed or verified. They can be it's called self-declared. Um, they can be used on lead, well, and living building challenge projects. So it's a little blurry, I'm zoom in here. Um, you can see the hazard screening scores that we talked about. Um, the, there's the materials, substances, the green screen scores. So you can see the uh, LT, UNC are not screened or benchmark two. Um, so all of these uh, substances were screened and their scores are listed here on the HPD. So that got us through all of the different uh, material ingredient reports that are available to use on LEAD as well as other green building programs that we uh, talked about uh, through each of them. If you've read through various green building standard requirements, um, material ingredient reporting, they have specific parameters around um, how much you have to disclose. There's a threshold for, and it varies per green building program. Um, and we have to look at the parts per million or PPM requirements. So disclosure, again, to, to various thresholds are identified in parts per million. The smaller the PPM value, uh, the more content that is being disclosed. So a manufacturer determines the threshold at which substances are itemized. So a, a thousand parts per million means that their uh, inventory includes substances at and above a thousand PPM concentration in a material. Same, like a hundred parts per million is a different way or 10,000 PPMs you don't usually see, but depending on the, the rating system that's being pursued, you'll see requests for disclosure down to 100 PPMs or uh, 1,000 PPMs. Uh, so for example, on um, a declare label that we talked about earlier, declare labels on a living building challenge project, they have to disclose 100% of the product down to 100 parts per million and they cannot contain any red list chemicals. Uh, a declare label on a lead project or a well project, um, you only need to disclose down to a thousand parts per million and uh, designated as red list free or declared. So it's, it's more, more difficult uh, to pursue a declare label on a living building challenge project than it is on lead. Uh, manufacturer inventories, they only require you um, disclose down to a thousand parts per million. Uh, UL product lens or HPDs, the manufacturer gets to choose if they want to disclose down to a hundred parts per million or a thousand PPMs. Um, again, we, we manufacturers have the ability to mark some ingredients as trade secret. It's not to hide anything, it's rather just to uh, keep formula secret, um, but still only a, a small percentage of ingredients can be marked as trade secret. So back to our steps. Uh, everything to this point explained is how material ingredient disclosures are created. Um, I hope project teams can understand why it takes manufacturers so long to produce material ingredient reports. It takes a lot of departments uh, within a manufacturing company. It takes a lot of conversations with suppliers uh, to produce a single report. Uh, so again, manufacturers would complete steps one through three um, so that project teams can disclose reports to achieve LEED's material ingredient credit option one. There is another point available um, for option two. And this would be uh, optimizing the products that we just talked about. So first, assessing the ingredients to identify each substance's health and environmental impacts, and then optimizing the product by uh, removing or replacing chemicals that um, have a, a negative impact. And these two steps that are highlighted here coincide with lead material ingredient credit option two. So for additional point under this one credit, um, you would pursue this, the, this, these two steps. 
And this is the lead language for option two, material ingredient optimization. Uh, you need to find five products that meet one of the four options here, uh, having an action plan. So uh, providing a plan to optimize the product or an action plan to remove or replace chemicals that have less impact on health and the environment. Uh, there's the advanced inventory and assessment path uh, to pursue a more rigorous investigation um, to determine if the environmental impacts of each substance or material in the product are, are ne impacting negatively. Uh, the material ingredient optimization path, it's pursuing an even more rigorous investigation. Um, and then identifying products um, that have their green screen scores and, and identifying if there are hazards and excluding, not excluding them, but uh, we would have to, a product could not have a green screen score of LT1 or benchmark one that we talked about earlier um, in order to pursue this path. The final option to contribute to, to points in, in this option would be to pursue an international alternative compliance path. Uh, I'm currently not familiar with any paths um, for, for international alternative compliance. While five products does not seem like a lot for this option, uh, this is still a very new option and very near impossible. Uh, I believe less than 5% of projects globally have achieved this option. You're probably asking yourself, why is this even an option? Um, well, it wasn't that long ago that option one was impossible. Um, so manufacturers will get there. It, eventually this will become the norm where we'll be able to provide this information quickly and, and um, it'll make sense eventually. But for right now, it's, it's still something that's very new to the industry. Manufacturers can also screen ingredients against a very targeted list of chemicals, such as the International Living Future Institute's red list you've heard or maybe you've requested a red list free check, uh, which means the product is screened to confirm it does or does not contain any substances on the red list. So this is a list you don't wanna be on or a list of chemicals manufacturers should avoid uh, including in their products. There's also a priority for red list inclusion, which indicates that the uh, chemical uh, will eventually be added to the red list in future versions. A chemical must be designated as a priority for at least 12 months before it's added to the red list. There's also a watch list. Uh, the intent of this list is to signal manufacturers and project teams that uh, certain chemicals or groups have been identified for potential inclusions on the red list and most likely will eventually find their way onto the red list. So it's important when you're selecting products um, that you're aware whether or not they're on the watch list, especially if you're pursuing a living building challenge project because you wouldn't want uh, the, the chemical to switch from watch list over to eventually, you know, priority and then uh, eventually the red list while your project is ongoing that could impact um, the imperative, the living building challenge imperative that you're pursuing. Red list changes annually. Uh, there's updates from the red list to the priority and ultimately to the red list all the time. Uh, there's also another uh, targeted list called it's Perkins and Will's precautionary list. Uh, they've compiled the most problematic substances that people encounter in the built environment and allow design professionals to search for key substances and chemicals of concern by filtering by uh, project type, product type, uh, and health and the environment impacts. This is a red list letter. Uh, there isn't necessarily a certification or formal document for sharing red list information beyond uh, having a declare label or a living product challenge label. Uh, but if a manufacturer doesn't have one of those, uh, forms of material ingredient reporting, you would just provide a letter stating whether or not their product includes red list chemicals or not. And this is an example of a um, red list letter that can be provided to project teams. 
So that was a long-winded way of sharing multiple approaches to material ingredient reporting. Uh, so now what? Uh, what what do you do now that you have all of this information? How do you how do you find products with uh, material ingredient reports? Um, start with specifications or talking to your project team. Uh, selecting products with sustainable attributes requires research and critical evaluation. There's a wealth of sustainable information available and continues to be developed pertaining to green products. The key is to start with green building certification being pursued, uh, after which the project team should educate themselves on the sustainable attributes that are needed to meet the certification system's goals and then find products that meet those requirements. So ask the project team questions. Uh, what, what green building certification is this project pursuing? What credits is the project pursuing? Are there specifications that I can look at that has this information? Uh, review specs, uh, review your specifications. 18113 is specific to sustainable design requirements. Uh, this section will notify you, it should notify you as to which green building certification the project is pursuing. Uh, review your spec section. Uh, the example here shows uh, 093000. Um, this section will further, there's a sustainability section within hopefully each spec section that further details the attributes or certifications the pro products should have. Uh, as we saw, there are many material ingredient reports available. Um, knowing buzzwords like HPD or material ingredient or cradle to cradle or MI or declare, there's so many, it, it'll help you better identify what the project team is asking for. You also know now that if a project team only specifies HPDs that you can also share that there are other uh, material ingredient reports available um, to, to share with the project team that are, that are equally as valuable as an HPD. Will every product meet these specifications? Probably not. Uh, it's best to work with project team and the manufacturer to find the best product or products uh, to, to meet the project project's goals or find alternatives. I also encourage you to ask MAPE. Uh, I, I reach out, please. Uh, we have a lot of information available um, both on our website as well as a dedicated team to providing sustainability information that we have. Uh, on our website, under the About Us section, we have a Health and the Environment section for general information on our commitment to sustainability. Uh, also have information about uh, the attributes or certifications our products may have. Under the Tools and Download section of our product information, library is available. Uh, it has a filtering option. I like to search by a sustainability product report uh, for all of the product's sustainable attributes rather than each type. Uh, inevitably, you'll need them all anyway. Under the products and solutions section, uh, each applicable product page will also have the product reports and sustainable attributes or certifications for download. And you can see where you can, it looks individual tiles for, for downloading uh, each of the uh, green building certifications that you may may need or other uh, information such as the tech data sheet or, or SDS. This is our sustainability product report. Uh, in more detail than the last slide, this is our two-page summary of a product's sustainable attributes or certifications. I've highlighted in the red checkered box uh, where project teams can find our material ingredient report on uh, this report. I, a lot of times we, project teams only know HPD, so they, they look at this and, and don't see HPD, so they don't know that you know, we, we do qualify for the HPD credit without having an actual HPD. Uh, this document is a one-stop report for each product's sustainable information, including links to backup documentation that you'll need for your project. Uh, we also have links to our sustainability email, our health and the environment page, and link to our mindful materials page. Uh, mindful materials, if you're not aware, it's a free platform uh, with aggregated information on human health and environmental impacts for products. Uh, project teams can essentially 
select building products by filtering through various options, including general material categories, such as adhesives or grouts and sealants, um, CSI division, you can sort by manufacturer or green building program that you're pursuing. Uh, we have over 375 products on the site and we keep this as up to date as our own website. So now the fun part, well, fun for me anyway. Um, what do project teams need this information for? What, what, what are they doing with it? How do you, how do you share this with lead um, reviewers or, or living building challenge? How does, how does the information go from the manufacturer to the customer? And then what does the customer do with the information? So we'll use lead in our example here as it's most common or most requested green building program. Uh, you've probably seen or you've probably forwarded uh, something similar to this. This is a submittal cover letter or form typically used on lead projects. This form is filled out for each product and covers all of the aforementioned uh, material ingredient reports as well as other green building certifications or attributes that we talked that we did not talk about today. Here's another example that you may have seen. Every product or material within divisions 3 through 10 and parts of 31 and 32 plus any VOC material regardless of the division used within the weatherproofing of a building should meet one or more of the requirements on these forms. So each product or material that meets the project's sustainability goals or credits being pursued is a product that contributes to the overall green building certification. I know that's a mouthful. Um, in contrast, if you are selecting products that have little to no sustainable attributes that also significantly can impact um, credits that contribute to the project team's green building certification goals. So the more certifications or attributes, the merrier the project team. Uh, we've also seen submittal request forms that are missing uh, sustainability attributes or certifications. Uh, I apparently had too much free time this day and uh, edited the submittal form that we got uh, to include other material ingredient report language uh, shown in green there. So again, we, they, this particular uh, submittal form that we received had cradle to cradle checkboxes, health product checkboxes, declare label of the furniture checkboxes, but they didn't include everything. Um, so every once in a while, typically when I come across a submittal form missing information, I'll post the form um, as a form of venting. Um, similar to HPD's cradle to cradle and declare labels, a manufacturer inventory, as we learned, is a material ingredient report that's accepted by green building standards and certification programs, such as LEED, such as WELL, and Living Building Challenge. It, it needs to be included on, on more submittal forms. So I just, just a moment to get on my soapbox and, and ask um, A&D teams to please add all forms of material ingredient reporting to your submittal covers. Um, you know, I wanna give credit to all of the manufacturers who are being transparent and making a difference. We like to, to share our sustainability accomplishments with you and we don't wanna have to say not compliant um, just because it's not on a submittal form that we're provided. Raise your hand if you've had to fill out a lead building product disclosure and optimization calculator before. My hands raised. So I, in my time before coming to MAPE, um, I was a sustainability building consultant and filled out these calculators till I was blue in the face. I'm one of the few that actually likes filling these out. I'm, I'm strange, I know. Um, if you're one of the lucky ones that hasn't had the opportunity to fill this out, this is what it looks like. Uh, project teams must fill out this spreadsheet tab for material ingredient reporting only. There are other tabs for EPDs, recycle content, uh, take back programs, et cetera. There's so many different tabs, but for today and everything that we've been talking about today, uh, it all gets plugged in on this calculator or this spreadsheet. Uh, this is why project teams ask a manufacturer if they have an HPD, an MI, a declare label, a cradle to cradle certification, et cetera. They have to fill out this spreadsheet. Uh, remember, in order to achieve one point, project teams must use at least 20 different products 
from at least five different manufacturers. So first, the project team will plug in the manufacturer name, product name, and material type in, this, in these columns that are highlighted here. Uh, in this example, there are 18 products that have been listed in the highlighted portion, as well as 15 manufacturers, including the pay. Uh, so, so far, we meet the requirement for a minimum of five different manufacturers in this scenario. Uh, now we have to fill out the material ingredient reporting section to achieve the other requirement of using at least 20 different products. So uh, we talked a lot about material ingredient reports. Some of them are more stringent than others. Uh, for lead, they're all worth the same value. So whether a manufacturer goes through the extensive effort to achieve cradle to cradle or has a self-declared uh, material ingredient report, uh, such as a HPD, they're all worth the same value to this calculator. Uh, at this stage, the project team would have reached out to manufacturers or uh, gone through their website or gone through Mindful Materials or another uh, product library to get all of the product uh, information that they need, including uh, whether or not a product has the material ingredient report. And this is where we would start to start, you would start plugging in the information that you pulled from different websites or from the manufacturer. LEAD has a handy pull-down menu um, with all of the material ingredient reports we talked about today. So in the first example here, we're talking about um, Map Elastic Aqua Defense. Uh, Aqua Defense has a manufacturer inventory, so we would select that option from LEAD's pull-down menu. Uh, the next column asks if the report you just selected is third-party verified. It's another pull-down menu that says uh, yes or no. Um, obviously, I know that uh, Mapay's MIs are third-party verified. Uh, we have the third-party verifier, which is green circle. Uh, their logo is on our MIs. Um, other material ingredient reports or manufacturers may report third-party verification differently. If a product is third-party verified, the project team selects yes, uh, as we've shown here. And if yes is selected, the lead calculator will auto-add 0.5 products in the last column. If it is not third-party verified, you would select no and nothing changes, but the, the calculator is adding or subtracting, or not subtracting, they're adding um, information based on the uh, yes or no column that you're pulling down. So of the 18 products uh, provided so far on the left, we identified the 18, um, but we were only able to fill out um, 16 uh, in the column. Let me see if I can move my mouse. Yeah. So in this column, we identified 16 of the 18 products here have a some type of material ingredient reporting, so 16. Um, just looking at this column, we would not meet the requirements of the 20 different products required for one point. However, with the third-party verified products being worth 0.5 additional products, we technically achieved 21 products. Uh, if fewer or none of these products were third-party verified, the project team would have to hunt down more products um, with material ingredient reports. So it's best to find as many third-party verified products as possible. Uh, lastly, you would have to upload all of the uh, material ingredient reports and this calculator to lead online for, uh, lead, for lead to review. Uh, lead reviewers will check that all the reports are included and they will check uh, all of your claims. So if you claim something is third party verified and they check and determine it's not, they will uh, deduct the 0.5 for that material or product um, that you claimed it had. Uh, alternatively, uh, if you have a verified for lead document, uh, you don't have to upload any backup documentation. You would just provide the document's ID. Uh, I'm also not going to get into option two portion of the calculator here. There is a, a section 
uh, for pursuing option two, very similar with, with pull down menus and uh, getting the total number of products and it calculates. So thank you for listening. I'm happy to share or provide uh, any additional information. Please feel free to contact us at the email addresses shown here. I look forward to connecting with you on uh, material ingredient reports and other sustainable attributes or certifications that uh, the pay has. We'll conclude today's webinar and we thank you for joining us because we know uh, how busy you are and uh, we do appreciate you taking time out to spend some time with us today and uh, we'll look forward to the next one. And Brittany, thank you again for a wonderful presentation. And Thank uh, you. Thanks. We'll see you next time. Have a good afternoon, everybody. Bye-bye.